everybody, this is Perch. Uh, here's a great question that we've got uh, from a viewer, and it says basically this. Do the editors know? Already, I'll just answer that. No. No, no that's, that's not fair. There's a lot of very hardworking editors. I do mean that. There are some very hardworking editors. But the, it goes this way. Hey, Perch, a question that's been on my mind for some time is do the editors and management at these publishing companies understand not only that some of these writers are divisive, but do they understand why? For example, looking back at Chuck Winding when he was fired, when he announced his firing, it sounded that as though the people who fired him were well aware of his divisiveness and activity and only let him go when he broke their last straw. This wasn't a case of them being taken by surprise that Winding was a dick on Twitter. It was just them being pushed to their wit's end, which to me, that's accurate, sounds like they are, at best, indifferent toward writers attacking their own fan base and driving down sales, even if just by a little. I've heard you talk about conversations with editors before, and I just have to ask, do these folks know that and why some of their writers are viewed as divisive by the fans? Uh, that's a great question, and I, I love it. And it's 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 thinking about the right way. I think in that, I, I don't know. There's a lot of um, commentary that goes on on uh, you know comics YouTube or comics channels that uh, basically you know assumes that either there's a big evil plot that people are all participating in, or that everybody is very aware of what's going on and they just don't uh, they 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 choose to uh, deliberately attack the fans. In many cases. And I said, from, from conversations I've had with editors, there's a combination of things going on. And when they add up together, when they're combined, it, it ends up in a really bad place. Uh, for them, mostly, but certainly for customers and others. Uh, first off, to kind of work through the, the email. Um, absolutely, it's true that the editors are aware that the writers or the creators, whoever it happens to be, are, quote unquote, a little spicy on social media. And that's a, that's, that's a quote I've heard, you know, we know that the writers are spicy and in many cases they go looking for that. They don't want a, a quiet kind of stick to themselves kind of creator. They want somebody who has shown the ability to mix it up a little bit. And for whatever reason, uh, many of the editors, because they're hiring people who are friends or within the network, the way you get kind of attached, the way you get part of that connection going is by being, in some cases, caustic toward customers, toward fans, toward people. Because, and this is the really kind of key important point. You know how I've done videos saying, you know, well, Twitter is, uh, is half of a percent of the comic audience. Well, a lot of the editors have heard this number as well. The challenge is they're interpreting that number differently than you might think. I suspect when most people, and I, from the comments of that video, when they heard that uh, me say, hey, it's half of a percent of people on Twitter, they're actually the comic buying audience. I'll bet a lot of you, I, again, I know it from reading the comments, a lot of you uh, took that to mean, hey, those uh, activist types, the people who are pushing for all the X-Men to be gay, or where's our where's our first trans Avenger, or why can't you make uh, Batman a Latino woman, uh, Latina woman? That's the kind of uh, thing that you're thinking about when you think about that, that Twitter audience. But it doesn't break down that way. It's Twitter, all of Twitter, including the people on Twitter who are saying, I, uh, I hate these, uh, these changes, I hate this SJW stuff, I hate this woke politics. It's everyone. The people who are talking on Twitter, either promoting whatever you want to think of in terms of representation or promoting a return to the days of Jim Shooter, that's all lumped in together. The 0.5 of buying comic people on Twitter includes those groups, both of them. In fact, and here's just a suspicion, I suspect that the 0.5% of people who are actually spending money are probably more of that uh, classic comic uh, customer, the person who has been buying comics for 30 years, just really wants a reasonable price and everything else. That tends to be the group. Notice when you go on to social media, you go onto Twitter, and you look at uh, the people who are talking about complaining about comics, one direction or another, whoever's complaining about comics, who tends to show the receipts? Who tends to show the actual purchase comic? Well, it's often the people who are standing up for, I wish comics would be like they were in the 80s. I wish Jim Shooter would come back. That tends to be the group that shows the actual purchase goods. The group that says, oh my God, I'm so thrilled that finally we've got a, a handy capable member of the Teen Titans. 
they, they those people don't tend to show the actual books. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying nobody buys anything. Of course, I'm sure people some people buy anything. But my point is, kind of I got off track here. The editor is hearing the message, hey, very few people on Twitter are actually buying the books. And their interpretation of that is, hey, um, the people who are complaining about being treated poorly by, you know, by creators, the people who are saying that you know, Chuck Winding or Dan Slott or these others are, are you know, really kind of uh, hostile and they're driving away sales, the editor looks at that and goes, but they're, they're not driving away sales. It's half of a percent. Who cares? They quickly take that metric and they go, I, I don't need to care about how creator, I mean, anyone who's complaining about how creator is talking on social media is not a customer. They're interpreting this, this data point almost exactly backwards from how a lot of the customers do. The reality is both sides are correct. And here's the problem. Uh, while both sides are wrong to some extent, it's the editor's incorrect. It's, it's the editor who's wrong that does deeper damage because the customer is actually, you know, they, they're, they're not making money off this. They're the they're person spending money. The editor is a person who's trying to draw out sales and draw in more customers. And if you're letting something like that go, like, you know, Chuck Winding yelling at people, um, you're, you're turning off, first of all, buyers. You're also turning off the silent majority. You are turning off people who aren't on Twitter, who occasionally may come by but not comment, the people who are just kind of tuning out of these things. But to the original question, absolutely, absolutely, the, uh, you know, the editors are, are aware this is going on. In some cases, encourage it because they like the personality type. And they are also very unaware of whatever damage it might be doing. Now, this is something that I really want to make sure people understand right. So I've said things like this before, and people go into the comments, and it's 100% clear they didn't get what I was trying to say. I am not trying to say that creators and people who work in comics should uh, feel free to run their mouths and be crazy on social media, because it doesn't really matter, because there is no comic buying audience there anyway. So what does it matter? Let them be themselves. I'm not saying that. I think people who work in a professional business should be professional. And I also think that there's a hidden cost to this. I think that while the people who are making noise on social media are you know, not a significant part of the comic buying audience, right now, if you go to Google and you type in, say, I don't know, Dan Slott, whether you're blocked by Dan Slott or not, Google is going to show you a couple tweets from Dan Slott. And those are the things that the normies are seeing. When you type in Spider-Man and when Dan Slott was in that title, if you typed in Spider-Man, you would see lots of tweets by the writer of Spider-Man. And if those tweets were nutty, it turns people off. People who are not on Twitter, people who are not on social media. It's bad to let that stuff go out of control. However, and this doesn't diminish that previous point at all, the battle that rages on Twitter itself, the people who are posting, the, the people who are getting very excited about it one way or another, that entire brawl, it's probably, that brawl is insignificant in terms of comic sales. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, even if you got all the people on Twitter who are angry at the current state of comics, even if Jim Shooter did come back, for example, and he, he dropped the hammer and said, we're going to go back to long form storytelling and we're going to fix everything all up. Sales would not go up because people on Twitter are happy. Sales would not go up because suddenly, uh, you know, the, the people who have been complaining on Twitter are like, well, finally, Jim Shooter has come back and everything is fine. That's not why sales would go up, because the buying audience there is insignificant. However, if those choices are good, if the uh, you know, editorial decisions that, say, a gym shooter uh, is making are solid ones, absolutely you're going to see the sales go up. But that's completely irrespective of Twitter. That's, I, I, I feel like this is a really, really simple thing, but it's hard to explain, and I'm probably overcomplicating it. But that's, that's the key. I do think it's, uh, it's bad. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's alarming. To me, it's, 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 
I don't know what's worse. If an editor who's hiring somebody to be on their project, who's you know soliciting a freelancer and bring them in, what is worse? If they do absolutely zero background check whatsoever and just bring in somebody and then are shocked at their terrible behavior? Or is it worse that they know that behavior exists and just yeah, don't think it really matters? The second is true, by the way. The second is exactly what's going on. The editor is bringing that person in and, and really, and, and many editors have told creators this. There's some creators listening right now to this that have probably heard this, which is, you know, you can say whatever you want on social media. Just don't, uh, don't make me have to give you a call saying you've gone too far. Uh, there's a, uh, was it the, there was an editor once who said, I give the same speech to all the creators I work with that uh, the social media policy is inside my desk drawer. I never like going to dig up the social media policy to see if the creator's broken it. I would prefer that social media policy sits quietly in the drawer and I never, ever, ever, ever have to look at it. If you make me have to look at that social media policy, I will not hire you for more books. So just don't get on my radar. Um, you know, I think that's terrible. I'm telling you that's what happens. That's the current approach. What has happened is that the noise about social media has gotten loud. You've started to see uh, on CNN and Fox and lots of other people talk about things out of control. You are seeing that, that entire debate go on. And so more and more editors are having to go look at the social media policy and are starting to warn people to stop it. But in general, the policy does exist of, as long as you don't make it painful for me, you can do whatever you want. And the reason why they think that is because they believe, hey, it's only uh, half of a percent of people on Twitter buying these comics anyway, so what does it matter if some people get their feel-feels hurt? doesn't really matter to me. That's the logic. And again, the big, the big problem in all that is, yeah, I do agree that the people who are on Twitter are, on, are active. And I know, again, several people listening to this right now are on Twitter, like to go on there, talk about you know customers blocking them, and they, they get 50 likes or whatever, and they've got that community. You're still an insignificant amount of the buying audience. That doesn't mean you're not important. It just means you're not the majority. You're not the big group there. The big group does exist, and the big group does interact with social media. It's just, one, they're not posting anything. They're not getting involved in this, this big fight. But two, in many cases, like I mentioned, try it for yourself. Go to Google, type in a creator's name who's you know particularly hostile on any given day, and see what comes up. Google will happily just present to you a bunch of tweets. Again, it doesn't matter if you're blocked or not. It'll show them to you. When you try and click on that tweet, then it opens up Twitter and then you'll discover you're blocked. But, you know, you can see them there. And that's how the larger audience, that's how the normies are seeing a lot of this behavior. That's how they're seeing it. And that's bad publicity. That's bad marketing. That does not help. It doesn't get anybody excited about Spider-Man to see somebody running their mouth about, I don't know, something stupid. For what it's worth. It's a good question. I like it. I like the uh, I like the thought behind it, and I, I think it's important that people kind of recognize because I do think there's way too simplistic of a view that a lot of people get that this is all some kind of carefully planned out ideological war that's going on. No, in most cases, it's a bunch of bumbling, dumb mistakes going on. That doesn't really make it better. Just maybe maybe I'll help you sleep at night. I don't I don't know. Up to you. There, there are certainly people who are trying to mastermind different changes in all directions around ideology. Those, those people are not working in comics. Not at this level. But, you know, you may have a different opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And thanks for listening.